we were going to talk about the 12 dimensional euphorics. I wasn't familiar with those. Like, what, what is that? Like, uh, I wasn't familiar with them either until they showed up and I'll, I'll tell you how this happened. So I, uh, I think it was in 2010 or so somewhere in that area. I was doing a radio show with my my friend and so she was doing this show on angels and i walked into the studio and she had i mean she had that room packed with angels i i walked took a couple steps in you could see them and they were literally just shoulder to shoulder all around the studio and i, I just was like wow what have you done and she goes i was just preparing the room for us so I went and sat down and she was going to do an, an, an angel reading for me. So I sat down in the chair and within about 30 seconds or so, I said, Corinne, I think I'm floating. And so she whipped her head under the, the table and she goes, you're floating about three inches off the ground. And I was like, I knew it. I knew it. But it was like scary at the same time. It was it was exciting. But I'm like we're going live in 30 seconds i i asked the angels please put me down so i can ground so we can do this show so during the middle of the show as she starts in doing this reading for me she starts talking about this incredible being who is so tall and this she called him an archangel because he was just um it, it, she didn't have any other reference point for him she said his name was Teak and she spelled it out. And all of this is on my website. If you ever want to go and anybody wants to go in and develop more of your psychic ability is I have all these radio shows on there specifically about that subject that you can listen to for free. They're just there. But um, this whole story is caught live. And so so she started describing this Teak, said he was a really amazing golden being and uh she just told me that i would have a real nice contact with him a real real powerful contact so um and man you could feel the energy in the room when he came into the room it was hard for us to even kind of breathe because his frequency was so powerful and so high so from that moment on i had teak as a steady mentor uh at any time and of the day and he was specifically came in to teach me all about how to raise the vibration of my body to a really, really uh, high level, high level of frequency so that we could have better communication with the 12th dimension. He described the euphorics and talked about the euphorics. And, uh, and then he introduced me to quite a few of the euphorics that are there. Uh, at one point he came and um, I had been asking about astral travel and he, he he just came one night and he said, uh, you ready to astral travel? And I'm like, sure, I, I hadn't done it before. And I mean, he grabbed me up. It was like, he like put arm around my waist and boom, we were headed off. Now remember, I'm awake when this is happening. I'm not asleep. I'm not in an altered state. I'm awake. And so immediately picks me up and takes me. And what was uh, interesting to me during this time was my thought of reference was uh, way back then at that time was we we have um, a Father God and that was it, you know. And I think there was the preface of a Mother God there. But as we began to leave the the Earth and this particular solar system. All of a sudden, I realized Mother and God, Mother and Father, stayed with the Earth, and we kept going up. We went uh, over and accelerated two different universes, and then went up into the central universe. When we got up into the central universe, as we were moving into the euphoric uh, dimension, he said, "This is going to hurt a little. If you, it's going to be an impact to you. The only way you can get into this is if you have a guide." So he said, just brace yourself. And uh, so I braced myself and wham, I felt like I'd hit a wall, like at 100 miles an hour. Uh, got through that all. It only took a few seconds and was able to restore. 
And um, then he took me into the central universe, into a place. It was it was a massive hall uh, that inside of it was the high council of deities. Now, I didn't understand that at this moment, why in the world I was being taken to this particular place with deities. Now, my reference again was God of the earth, right? So all of a sudden now I'm, I'm now paying attention to multiverses and to a central universe. And then from there being taken into this council of deities, this high council. And these deities were of many different species, uh, some, but, but it was of a very light nature. So their density was almost nothing. And they, they, they put on some form of physicality so that I could experience this with them. And uh, each one of, there was many windows that had these domes that came up to a point. So the windows came like this to a point. So if you had a whole bunch of them, it would literally make, you know, a half dome. And in each one of these were flashing universes and what was going on in that particular universe. And I went, here we are in this celebration and all of these deities are able to see their universe and what's going on in their universe. And it, it just made for a beautiful light show all around. Uh, I didn't know that at that time that these dimensions, that, that when they go up that high, that they could have some form of physicality. It's a very different kind. Of, it's not a density like ours, but it is a form of replicated reality in in a light form. I don't know how else to experience it. So my experience of it was very much connecting to my earth experience so I could make sense of it. Um, and then uh, and then at a certain point, they had a, a ceremony. And um, after it was all over with, I told Teak I, I needed to get back to earth because I had to write all this down because it was so magnificent. And um, he said, all right, well, you can I locate you can be in two places and I'm like well if I leave can I come back because I wanted to continue the celebration so he showed me how to be able to do that and I did leave but left a portion of me there in the 12th dimension and then came back wrote it all down and then went back to the party um That's it amazing. was it was, uh, I learned so much. And then on a second time, Teak had to come and took me to, uh, there was three experiences of going into the euphoric realm. Now, if you go into these euphoric realms, uh, they, they are born into perfection. So they're born being uh, what we would refer to as perfect or all-knowing but they have no experience. So you've got all of these youthful euphoric and they don't have the experience that we have. So, so earth, uh, earth people are really fascinating to them because they see us so hilariously because of all the things that we do and they can't understand why we do what we do because it's such a world of chaos and hilarity to them. They're, they're kind, they're loving, they're understanding, but they don't have the experience. So um, they rarely had interacted with anybody from Earth. And uh, so I didn't really have much reference until there was somebody else in Phoenix that had 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 experiences with the euphorics and uh, it was so interesting how I connected to them and how how the whole thing was just laid out and brought to me to be able to connect with him so that I had somebody else to bounce these ideas off of and and to learn from who had been communicating with euphorics for quite some time so um, that was my beginning process that's how I started into spirituality I I had had one experience with an angel and then it was like these 12th dimensional beings were the ones that came in and just did this super course on me on helping me to remember who i was and why i was here and uh 
and teaching me from such a different aspect of even the normal spirituality here. So that's kind of, that's, that's some of my experiences with the 12th dimension. I want to tell you a little bit about Teak though. So Teak was so much fun when he was teaching me. There were times, uh, one time I was ready to go to a, uh, a party, a psychic party. And so I was going to this party and going to do readings there. Well, I was kind of tight on time and I wanted to stop by my office. When I stopped by my office to pick some stuff up for the party, I had accidentally locked my phone, my keys, and my purse all in the office. And I'd just gone out for a minute, the door shut and it locked. So here I am needing to get to this meeting and close on time. And I have one of those massive office doors that's metal that when it clicks shut, it's done, you know? And I, I'm just panicking all of a sudden. I said, Teak, you gotta open this door for me. You gotta open this door, it has to be open. And he says, I want you to jiggle it. And so I just went over the door and just started jiggling like crazy. And I jiggled for about 10 seconds and the door flew open. And I had tried numerous times before that to do the same thing, but he had just like, just opened the door. And then it happened again about a month later, I was getting ready to go to uh, a large meeting and, and I was the speaker at the meeting. So I had to be there and prepare the room and everything, get everything ready. And when I got there, there were already other uh, so there were people that had come and they were standing outside the building. I didn't understand why they hadn't gone in the building. And then when I got up to the door, they said that the door was locked. Well, this was an automatic lock. I couldn't get hold of the person to unlock it. So I'm thinking, oh no, here's all these people here and we're not going to have a place to do this. So I just, it, I just said, Teak, open this door. And I swear it was like two seconds later, the door unlocked and by itself, it just clicked and unlocked and we're standing there. And so we opened the door and we could have the meeting. Uh, there were times when sometimes I would have spiritual experiences at these meetup groups and they would be so powerful that I wouldn't, um, I couldn't ground very well. And there were times that Teak would literally take the wheel of the car and drive me home. And you've never been in a car with a euphoric driving. It is the most bizarre feeling ever as you're sitting in the driver's seat and someone takes the wheel and they don't, they don't turn the car with the wheel. They just rotate, kind of like glide it into turning. And, um, and I've had them drive me home several times when it hasn't been safe for me to drive. You um, know what, Dolly, I was going to say, I, 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 I was, I would be skeptical about, uh, 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 angel contact, but I had that guy on my show recently, Michael Andre Ford. He's like, he was on coast to coast. That's where I saw him at. And, uh, and, and he was, he taught me how to kind of connect with angels and like, I almost forgot about that, but when during it, I had an experience. Like it seems like the angels can, like they can send like a thumping into your hand, or they can send a tingle down your spine, or a, um, or a, a little feeling in your stomach to like, kind of let you know that they're there too. Is that is that all possible too? Do you think that? I mean, I'm kind of asking you, like, do you think I was yeah. having like like contact with like? And then the angels also put thoughts in my head they put like not just thoughts but like projections of like kind of like um of what she wanted me to look at her like he he sent me this angel he called joy right and i can imagine her in my head but i think it was the angel sending me images into my head too does that all sound like angelic contact or, or maybe the beginning stages of it very much and uh first i'd like to tell anybody who's wanting to have angel contact there are light angels and there are dark angels. So if you're just saying, I want angelic contact, boy, you're opening yourself up to a lot of fun, uh, a lot of learning and not in a very pleasant way. So you want to make sure that you're contacting angels, archangels of the light, always use of the light. And then at that point, you just, when you feel some interaction with them, because almost always you'll either feel an uplift, uh, like uh, just a, a small rise, uh, a, a little bit ha more happy, a little more joyous, and you'll know that you're dealing with the light ones. If, you, if you're interacting or you're trying to interact with any being and you feel a kick in the gut or you're wondering, ooh, is this good or not? Right there, you know, no, back out, say, you know, I chest him, 
you know, it was one of the things I used to do when I would all, I always ask them, who, who are you of the light and who do you serve? And I would wait for them to answer if they could serve, if they could answer that they were of the light and I could feel that, then I would go ahead and interact. If they weren't, I would dismiss them. Uh, it took me a while to do that. Same way with archangels. There's archangels of the light and there's archangels of the dark. And I have, uh, in the beginning, years and years ago, I had the experience of a pseudo Archangel Michael. And they're, when you're dealing with the actual beings, they're incredible. When you're dealing with a pseudo, they love to play games with you and tell you, go do this and go do that. And, and they just keep you busy and active. And it's all for the play and fun of them being able to keep you sidetracked. So um, uh, when you're truly dealing with angelic, they are all about free will. They're all about your choice. They're not interfering with your plan here on earth unless you ask for specific information or, or volunteer to assist. So you kind of want to be careful how you approach and then always just feel your gut. If your gut feels good, you're good to go. And if not, and it took me a while to be able to figure out uh, Archan this Archangel Michael wasn't out for my best interest. And um, so I cut that off completely and didn't reconnect with Archangel Michael for about two years until I had a different uh, foundational basis to be able to further connect and know when I'm connecting with who I'm supposed to connect with and um, and just uh, built a stronger shield around myself to make sure that that didn't happen. But you're right. They they can make you tingle. Uh, they can make you, it. It's always a feel good feeling, though. You will always feel good. If there's any moment of feeling unpleasant, then at that point, of course, you withdraw. And it's just learning. It, it's just learning to navigate. Can can bad beings mask themselves as good beings ever though? Do we have to ever watch for that, or is it? Are they? Do they mostly like? I, I was oh. thinking that maybe if we command them to identify themselves as being of the light or of the dark, that they would have to. Do they have to? Um, do they have to abide by what we say, or could do? They do. do they do. They can't. When you ask them what side they're on, the light or the dark, they have to say truth. They have to. They can't lie about that which is interesting, but of course, oh my gosh, we have a lot of channelers that are on YouTube and I sometimes I'll, I'll stop and listen in. Somebody comes up with, okay, here's a, here's an amazing channeling and they'll have a really good, you know, intro and everything. And I'll get just into it for just a few seconds and go, whoa, this is so not good. The uh, negative alien alliance here on earth uh, that goes along with the elites that work directly hand in hand with the elites have put in all of these counter programs for us on YouTube to have or or anywhere in any place to have these um, these channelings that are literally inserting incorrect information like one of those is the event is coming the event is coming everybody's going to be ascended at the same time um, anytime you hear somebody talking about this event coming you know you're pretty much dealing with a false program because the event is already here it's it's ongoing it's it's waves of ascension it's not everybody at once it's as everybody rises in their vibration there is another wave that will come and take them up and be able to continue their acceleration but it's not just one big event like christ coming you know and and all of the things that we've been told through religion it's it's an ongoing process 